uh, November 4th, 2010, I received a phone call from a uh, emergency room doctor from Oak Forest Hospital. And he told me right then and there that I had lung cancer and I need to come in immediately. Uh, once they found what they thought was cancer, wasn't cancer. I was in surgery for seven hours and it all falls into the legal aspect. It goes from medical to legal because the legal part of it is if they would have found any form of cancer in my body, they would have been justified in severing my left lung. So after the surgery, no cancer is present, I have what's called a paralyzed hemidiaphragm. Basically, it's one lung that's functioning. I tried to sue the county, but there's a law or a statute that prohibits you from suing the county. It's toward immunity statute in respect to public hospitals. So with no attorney willing to take my case with uh, virtually nothing, I did some research on my own, I did some reading, and I scheduled a hearing and had my case heard before a board, and I based my case on <clears throat> personal injury. I won my hearing. I won my right to have my day in court, as they say. I later retained an attorney. At that point, we're talking six years of grueling court procedure, et cetera, whatever you want to call it. The three conspirators, one perjured himself in court, which was one of the doctors. The other one fled the country. The third one actually tried to hold off being served with a subpoena for a little over four years, but we finally got him. With that being said, I'm going to leave some information about tort immunity. Tort immunity gives public hospitals the right to misdiagnose you and there's nothing you can do about it. Out of my story or my experience, a book came out of this. We're now working on a movie and out of this now I'm working with some of the lawmakers here to change the law. Um, legislation is supposed to be introduced in August of this year. I'm hoping and praying that they can change it because it's a terrible statute. Now we're going to take a part for Q&A. When I was in surgery for seven hours, they biopsied what they thought was a lymph node that was with cancer. They did it three times. So basically, they were trying to cover to make sure after the mistake was already made. My lung was damaged during the first incision. My lung, I have what's called a paralyzed hemidiaphragm. Basically everyone else's lungs, both lungs work simultaneously up and down. Well my left one is paralyzed, it's in an upward motion. So Periods of talking for a long time, walking up flights of stairs, I'm out of breath. So it's a lifestyle change. The greatest accomplishment from the book is to change the statute. Exactly, you hit it right on the head. I was just going to Jamaica, raise your hands. <laughs> This is my high school class of 84, and it was very, very unbearable because as you know, as you ascend in the air, the oxygen changes, the air is thinner. Um, I actually took a breathing class. It, it sounds crazy, but I took a breathing class, and they taught me two techniques. One was called purse mouth breathing, and it's similar to when women go in labor, they have Lamaze. The other technique that was introduced to me was called Batiko. And both of those work when I get into a situation where I'm running, I'm running low with oxygen or out of breath. Well, 
know, like, it's, it's a twofold situation. You have to find a lawyer that his expertise is in medical malpractice or personal injury. And then you have to introduce it to him. And when you introduce it to him, he's got to get all the necessary information to make a decision if he's able to win the case or even if he wants to take the case. Okay, there are a couple of ways this can be done. Right now, I'm working with uh, Will Davis. He's my state rep. Uh, Napoleon Harris is another one that's helping me with this case. Any of your state reps, senators that are privy to uh, basically downstate Illinois General Assembly, they can uh, give you some insight on it because it is a, it's a terrible, terrible statute. I was turned down by about 15 attorneys in basically a, maybe a 12 month period. Some of it had to do with racism. I talk about it in the book. Uh, a friend of mine who's white, we both went to the same law firm. We called the same law firm. And they based their decisions basically on our zip code. He lived north, I lived in the South Burbs, and the exact same case. So I went in his place and said I was him, and when they saw me, that's how I knew it was racism. I feel vindicated that the case is settled, I can move on with my life. I also know I have lifestyle changes that I have to make, that I am making, so I realize I'm not 20 anymore, I can't run up and down the court like I used to. I still love the game. My long-term effects are, in the summertime, I get extreme bouts of asthma, because now I'm asthmatic. Uh, the wintertime, I have to worry about upper respiratory infections, uh, colds, bronchitis, I, you know. So I'm a little cognizant of it, but, you know, it's hard to kind of keep a gauge on it, so, yeah. Uh, how I found out, the surgery was, 20, it was January 20th. I was rushed back to the hospital the very next day that we had those 23 inches of snow, and it took me basically three hours to get to Oak Forest Hospital from where I live in Harvey. And that's when I saw the conspiracy because one doctor pointed the finger at another. So 30 days after that, I got married to my wife. Had. <laughs> Biggest. Oh well. Uh, 30 days after that, I uh, got married. This woman married me, stapled up. I steal staples in me and everything. She married me. You laugh. So, yeah. So yeah, um, I didn't find out that two months after the surgery by the doctors at the University of Chicago, I got better health insurance, I got married, started going there, and they have to do a disclosure before they take you on as a patient. So their findings were, no, I never had cancer, two, the reason that I have shortness of breath because I have a paralyzed diaphragm. So once they disclosed it to me, that opened up the legal aspect of it. <laughs> me! <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, um, I don't know. Good question, though. Technically, no, because my age is an issue. If I was a candidate for a lung transplant, that means that my functioning lung would have to be below 75%. Oh man, the 
support system has been awesome. My mom, my aunt, my sister-in-law, and where that lady there? That one, my wife. She was my biggest supporter. Um, we had known each other very long when I was diagnosed with cancer. And a lot of times, we as men, we don't want to get back after we got out of the divorce, the last thing we want to do is jump back in. And this woman was there from day one. I was I always teased. I said, when I first met you, I met the representative, not the person. <laughs> but I can honestly say she's true to it. You gonna do a dance? Wait a minute. She gonna do a dance? <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate you all. It's not just the support that he's gotten from family, it's the support that we've gotten from friends too. And I really appreciate everything that my friends and his friends do for us because it has just made his journey a lot easier as well as mine. So um, I'm proud of you, husband. you grab for the gift on really? Like, can you talk? <laughs> It is heavy, isn't it? I, I just want you to know that I am very proud of you, husband, because I'm telling y'all, it's been a journey. And you stuck with it. And I mean, he stuck with it. Julian became his own lawyer. He became his own everything. They said no, he said, yeah, watch me. And of course, I'm like right there, just going through it with him, whatever it was. I don't know, I'm talking, I'm talking about nights of him just thinking and writing. And I bought a tablet. I mean, I don't need to be writing no more because then I'm going to have to rub his hands. So I went and bought a tablet. But <laughs> it's just been a long journey, and I just want to show him how much I love him, and this will hopefully start your journey to your career in writing, movies, or whatever. Just a little something. The author's uh, ink blot, ink blot and pen, and it has J Styles engraved on it. J Styles engraved, engraved on the pens, and it's the one where he can put it in, and okay. like authors do. Uh, this, is just, this is just a journal for him to continue his um, writings or whatever it is he might uh, choose to do. And the pen is engraved, and so is the pen. And for real, let me tell you how what really how it was. No, I'm just kidding. 